The architect John Shumi is one of the most recognized 20th century leaders in modern and elegant corporate architecture. In 1960, he won the architectural competition for the headquarters of the World Health Organization. At the time, his son Bernard Shumi was only 16 years old. Today, he's also a well-known architect globally. Let's meet him. At the time, end of the 50s, early 60s, many of the major institutions and major corporations were very interested in using architecture in order to provide an identity, an image to their uh, organization. And uh, in that particular case, a competition was put together with some of the best architect of the time and I was a teenager then and I saw the, uh, the, the, the making of the project. I remember uh, how uh, Jean Chumi would prepare different variations, different alternatives, and look at which one was the best. It was a mixture between absolute clarity on one hand and an incredible idea of fluidity and dynamism on the other. Let me explain. You have the uh, main building, which is this major, precise, extraordinarily elegant uh, volume. And then you have in the plan a spiral, a spiral which is really about movement, about the movement of crowds, the movement of ideas, uh, the movement in the world. And at the center of that spiral is the major uh, meeting room where the most important representatives of all these different WHO countries would discuss major issues of health today. How did your father imagine the working conditions inside the building? A building is not only what it looks like, it's also what it does. And it is important to understand that the comfort and the uh, community that he can encourage inside the building itself is also important. And it was probably a time when both in Europe and in America, uh, architects were interested in improving the mode of, of daily work in terms of establishing not only a workplace, but also cafes, uh, areas where people could talk and exchange ideas. So in other words, the building is not only a workplace, but it's also a social place. To further stimulate conviviality at work, as well as create an inspiring and motivational environment for staff, the building has an exhibition space for artworks donated to WHO by its member states. This openness to paintings and sculptures has also evolved over the decades, understanding the importance of different art forms that contribute to the well-being of all people. This gigantic oil painting is one of the most popular meeting spots for WHO staff. It was donated by the government of Brazil in 1966 for the opening of the building. The artist is Ibere Camargo, and the size of this painting perfectly fits the volume designed by the architect for this main building. Now, Bernard, was the modular office design envisaged by Jean Chumi? Uh, after the Second World War, uh, something incredible happened uh, in, in architecture, which was the development of technologies that could allow for a certain flexibility in the way to arrange each of the floor plates. You could have it either partitions through a series of individual offices or open it up in larger offices or completely open the floor plate uh, so that anything can be even sort of reinvented. So this was very fascinating to see the new possibilities and the Jean Chumé building, the uh, WHO, was exactly achieving that particular possibility. There is another aspect of 
new building technologies, which is the invention of precast concrete and pre-stressed concrete. The building is extraordinary in its ability to span and to uh, have cantilever on both directions, therefore freeing much of the ground floor and making it possible to give that impression of a hovering flat slab uh, under which nature and uh, the landscape can feel like it is continuing. In May 1962, during the laying of the first stone, the president of the 15th World Health Assembly declared, the building to be constructed here shall stand as a symbol and focal point for the hope of all humanity to someday be free from disease. It is actually a tragedy that the architect, Jean Trumi, was not able to witness the construction. He died literally weeks before the beginning of the construction itself, but he had completed the design by then. Was the construction of the building a technical challenge at that time? Uh, the, the construction was incredibly sophisticated, but of an amazing, I use the word elegance again, but elegance the way a mathematician may use this in a demonstration. How you can be so precise about something which is actually quite complex and provide something that could, in a way, be an example of how to approach relatively complex organization. WHO is not a simple symbol, in a sense, over 190 different nations sharing values in one particular architecture. The WHO campus also hosts the headquarters of UNAIDS in a building constructed in 2002. UNAIDS is a partnership of several United Nations agencies and the World Bank. It was launched in 1996 as the leading advocate for worldwide action against the HIV AIDS epidemic. Okay, let's go. You can admire the Mont Blanc, the Lake of Geneva, and part of the city from the roof of the building. And it is in this remarkable site that a new building was built between 2017 and 2021. A time capsule containing symbolic elements on the important work of the World Health Organization was sealed in 2019 inside the main slab of this new building. It is a way of inscribing this construction in the present time while highlighting the public health achievements for the benefit to all future generations. They organized another competition, but quite differently. This time entirely open. And there were, I believe, something like 250 different uh, proposals. We came to one project which had a clarity and a simplicity, which was acting in perfect dialogue with the original 1960 building of Jean Trumi. And I'm very happy about this conversation, in a sense, that is taking place between one building and another on a site which is quite extraordinary. Remember, you have the lake, you have other international institutions, you have the low mountains nearby. That meant that it was important that somehow everything would work as a, an incredible sort of serenity, something that would have a dignity, a dignified. And I think very soon we saw that the way those various volumes work with one another was actually successful. The new building that was completed in 2021 represents a modern infrastructure fully dedicated to find solutions to the biggest challenges that humanity has to face in order to achieve health for all in a healthy planet. Here we are, an incredible organization of places.
Constructing this new building was necessary. This building is more than just bricks and mortar. It's a platform for the work of WHO around the world to promote health, keep the world safe, and serve the vulnerable.